Well, hi everyone, and I'm back again after two weeks break. So this week I'm going to do an acrylic painting for the first time ever. Now this is the canvas that I've used and I have painted it with two coats of gesso, white gesso, to prepare it. And this is the gesso that I've used which is called Liquitex Professional Gesso. Uh, I bought this from Hobbycraft, I can't see a price on it but it wasn't cheap. I only bought a small pot because I didn't know if I'd like it or not. Right, and then I have painted over the canvas with a couple of coats of just a beige colour. And that's the photo that I'm going to use, same photo again, same tracing, looking a bit dog-eared now. I'm starting off putting in the white. I don't have many brushes. So I thought I'd do the white first as I'm going to have to keep washing out the brushes and it's better to always start with a lighter colour. So just doing all the whites. This is a first coat and I will add a second coat. Now I'm not saying this is how you do any of this because I've never done it before. So this is a big learning curve for me. And it's just the way I thought I'd do it. I did look up in a book about doing acrylic paintings and it did talk about doing various layers, so just like in watercolour. I didn't want to have the kind of watercolour effect that you can get with acrylics because I thought if I wanted to do that I would just use watercolours. So I'm trying to get a thicker paint look. So this will have several different layers of the same colours. This won't be the final layer. So I'm just covering up the underpainting, the, um, the background colour with this and identifying what colour each bit will be. Now the face, again, like I did with pastel, I've just done a whole over colour and then I'll try and blend in the shadows afterwards so it looks pretty fearsome at this stage. Ah, he's got another blue rinse because I still feel that putting blue underneath black is a good thing and that even maybe with acrylics it will kind of shine through and not make it just a solid black mess. So I'm then giving a second coat to the hair and then a third layer with brown and then I will do a, a final layer in black again. So that will be four layers for his hair. And again this is the first layer of the orange. I'm identifying things just to make it easier when I come in to give the next layers. So I know which bit goes with which colour. I don't know that I'm really happy with the acrylics. I think I take some getting used to. They dry really fast and so it's difficult to kind of mix them on your paper to blend them. I know you can get different formulas that actually stop them from drying quite so rapidly. I didn't have any so I couldn't try that out but I think before I have another go I will definitely get some retarder which slows the drying time down and enables you to blend on the canvas. Now I'm going to add the highlights to his eyes and immediately that makes such a change. The biggest change in a portrait is when you add the highlights to the eyes. It really makes it come alive. Before that the eyes are just dead. and. I think that is such a fascinating thing that two little dots of white or even you know four dots of white in this case make such a big change to this portrait. Now what I hadn't noticed here was that his chin looks like he's got some sort of growth because it's too far to the left of the painting and I didn't notice this until the next morning when I came to re-look at the painting so the great thing about acrylics is that you can just go over it, which obviously if I'd done this with watercolour it would have been far more difficult. I might have been able to mend it, but I might not. But with acrylics it was very easy to put right and at the end you will see that I have improved it. 
Now coming back in and doing over the black again. Again, I should have started on the left hand side so that I wasn't working over my wet painting. But sometimes you can't teach an old dog new tricks. You know, I keep doing this. Stupid woman, I'm doing the same drawing each time. Why do I keep making the same mistake? I think the eyes are a little bit too bluey, sort of more on the the purple side of blue. I should have made them a little bit more on the greeny side. But definitely when I look at it against all the other portraits, the eyes are a little bit too sort of sky bluish. And here is a second coat on the white. Just to sort of kind of make it brighter. I don't like it when you can see through an acrylic painting to the drawing underneath. I always feel that it looks unfinished. So I didn't want mine to be like that. So that's why I did kind of on a lot of places three layers. Some of my acrylics as well, like the green, seemed to have gone a bit odd. It was very, it looked oily almost and the colour didn't seem to mix with the oil. So I don't know if it's because the paint is old, but um, there's definitely something wrong there. So it wasn't a nice, crisp, thick, opaque colour. It was kind of more transparent. And that was true of a couple of colours. I can't remember the other colour that was like that as well. It might have been the blue. The white is brightening. It's having its third layer. And it just, I think it makes it crisper and to sort of kind of come alive a little bit more. I'm putting in the shadows again, I found very difficult to blend because the white had already dried. So in future, I will definitely get some of this uh, retarmed gel to slow the drying time. I don't really like doing the same painting over and over again, so, <laughs> You might not be able to believe that, having done this one so many times, but it's not something I really like doing. So this has been kind of not boring. I wouldn't say it was boring. It's never boring, but um, a different challenge to keep myself fresh with this picture. But using mediums that I've never used before is certainly a way of making you stay fresh with your painting. And every time I've done this picture, I've learned something new about the drawing, about the actual picture itself. Because when you draw something, you actually see that thing much more detailed than you have ever seen things before. When I draw landscapes, I notice things that I've never noticed in that landscape before, and that is quite fascinating. Now I'll just tell you a bit about um, the supplies that I used. As I said before, I used this Liquitex Professional Gesso to prime the canvas. I use three brushes, a half inch flat by De La Rowney, um, a number one round system three acrylic brush by De La Rowney, and a number four round system three by De La Rowney. And my paints were all Kryla artistic acrylics by De La Rowney. And the canvas was just a canvas I bought in a cheap store. As always, I will list all the materials I used in this video below. I'm going back into the face and just uh, highlighting some darks in his nostrils and his eyes and his ears and also trying to add more shadows. It did turn out quite pinky, his face. Um, on the bluey shade of pink rather than the orange shade of pink. I don't have an orange. And I think before I do anything else, I'm going to buy a cadmium orange. 
because even my red was a bit pinky and although I added some yellow, it's still the oranges didn't come out as vibrant as I would have liked. So we are beginning to come to an end with this portrait. I'm actually quite happy with it, which surprises me because I was extremely um, apprehensive thinking about doing it. But on the whole, quite satisfied. Now, next week's is the same image, but this time in oils, which I haven't done since childhood, so that should be interesting. Please stay safe, stay well, and see you next week, next Sunday at 15.30. Bye!